The other day we talked about having respect for your concentration. And it's a respect that goes two ways. Respect for your own concentration and respect for the concentration of the people around you. Respect for your own concentration means that you really give value to those little quiet moments in the mind. They're like the spaces that we tend to not look at. We're more interested in the, the thoughts of the mind. What you can think about this, what you can think about that, and the few moments when the mind rests between, the th between its thoughts don't seem to hold much interest at all. There's a passage where the Buddha says that we tend to be ignorant of these moments because they lack interest, because they're in the background. And the skill of meditation is learning how to notice them as you let go of a particular thought, let go of a particular creation of the mind. And the mind is actually released from that thought. There's a moment of stillness. What you want to learn how to do is appreciate those moments, give them more space so they begin to connect. So even though there may be thoughts going on in sort of the back corners of the mind, that's not where your attention is. Your attention is with the stillness. You give it space. You pay attention to it. You are careful about it. This is the word citta in Pali. One meaning is mind, but the other meaning is intent. You have to be really intent on these things. Focus your attention on the still moments. Give them your full attention. Give them space to grow. So you don't step all over them. Most of us, when we meditate, are looking for the bright lights and the flashy, the ideas of light or visions, really extraordinary states of mind. We have to keep reminding ourselves that the flashing lights usually tend to be around casinos, pretty unreliable places to go into. And the aspects of the mind that you can really depend on are more like the grass on the path, because there in the grass are little shoots of other trees that really do hold promise. Little shoots of oak trees, little shoots of pine trees, whatever. If you give them space, give them fertilizer, water, make sure bugs don't eat them, you find that they begin to grow. And what may not look all that promising to begin with suddenly becomes major shelter for the mind. Having respect for concentration also means that you have to rearrange your life. Look at the ways in which you're draining your mind of its energy, draining your mind of its focus. In terms of the things you read, listening to TV, the people you hang around with, you really have to look at your life to see whether it's a life that's conducive to concentration or not, whether it's conducive to the health of your mind or not, and be willing to make changes. Subject the mind to fewer and fewer distractions, fewer and fewer stimuli that are going to excite greed, anger, delusion, lust, fear, whatever. So the mind has space to gather its strength. So it's not always having to contend with things. Things that waste its energy. In other words, you learn have to have to learn how to husband your strength for the issues that really are important. There's a story they tell of a Chinese martial arts master whose students were going to be giving a demonstration one day in a pavilion out in the forest. The road to the pavilion had a donkey on the side, and this was a very well-known donkey for its meanness, it like to kick people who came past on the road. 
And so the martial arts students came along as a group, and they said, hey, let's test our skills here with the donkey before we get to the pavilion. So the first one goes up to the donkey, tries one stance. He gets kicked across the road. The second student said, no, that's not how you do it. You fool, you do it like this. He went up with another stance, but he got kicked across the road. And in the end, all the students got kicked across the road, no matter what stance they took. So they consulted among themselves, what, what would the master do? Well, the master was coming behind him, so they hid in the bushes on the side of the road to watch him. And as soon as he got to the donkey, he walked way around. It's a sign of good warrior to know when to, which battles to take up and which battles to leave alone. It's not that you go running in and taking on everything all at once. You look at your strength, you look at the issues, what's really important, what's really worth expending your strength, your energy on, and save your energy for those important things. Learn how not to waste it. The other side of respect for concentration means showing respect for other people's concentration, too. We here at the monastery don't have a no speaking rule. But it is wise to keep keep your speech to an absolute minimum. This is one area where if someone wants to be quiet, we should learn how to respect their desire to be quiet. Without their having to explain an awful lot. In other words, they come to the meal, they eat, they want to eat quietly, you leave them alone. And it's good training for each of us, too, to learn to look at our speech. If there's an absolute rule against speaking, and the mind just goes on, chattering, chattering, chattering away all the time to fill up the space. But if you're allowed to speak, but you're reminded to speak wisely. John Fuhring had a good rule for this. He said, ask yourself before you say anything, is this really necessary? If it's not, you don't have to say it. Don't say it. I found that when I first started to trying to apply that rule, cut down my speech about 95% you realize that a lot of the chatter in the course of the day is just that, idle chatter. Fills up the space. And we know what filler usually is. Styrofoam peanuts. Shredded newspapers. And the problem is, when you're trying to fill up space many times, just whatever comes in your mind just pops out your mouth without you really thinking about what the consequences are going to be. And a lot of the speech that creates problems is just that. Things you didn't really intend to say. But somehow they managed to come out. So try to show respect for the concentration of people around you, too. This way, the fact that we have lots of people here, instead of being a hindrance, actually becomes a help. Many people notice that when you sit in a room full of meditators, it's a lot easier to get concentrated. But then if you leave the room and everybody chatters, it just destroys it. Show some respect for concentration, because it's basic respect for the mind. Because it's through concentration that all the other good qualities of the path that go beyond it, the discernment, release, depend. It's part of our respect for our desire for true happiness, our respect for the fact that other people desire true happiness as well. Because this is the path. The Buddha once said, the Eightfold Path, right concentration is the heart. The other seven factors are its requisites. Things that help it along, things that give it strength, but the concentration itself is the heart. So keep that in mind. Try to maintain that heart. Don't let it stop beating, because it's hard to get it started again. Or if it beats erratically, then it's not much help either. You want a steadiness to the concentration. So it becomes your background. It becomes the basic center for the mind. As we were saying today, we're working on a concentration that's centered but expansive. You have one spot where your main focus is, but the range of your awareness 
should spread to fill the whole body. So there are no hidden corners and no places where denial and other dishonest mind functions can, can hide. You want a spaciousness where when thoughts come up into the mind, it doesn't destroy the concentration. You can watch them come, you can watch them go, but the concentration, the sense of foundation, because that's what samadhi means. It's a mind that's established, a mind that's solid. in its footing. So you want a type of concentration that has space for things to come and go. You might want to think of your awareness as this large screen, in the sense of a screen on a window. It's a net through which the air can pass. It's a particularly useful image when you're sitting and meditating and there's lots of noise, and you tend to resist the noise destroys your concentration, just makes it a real battle. But if you think of your, your body and your whole awareness as this big screen, with all these holes that the noise can come through and just go out the other side without your having to react, it makes it a lot easier. There's much less struggle. There's space in your concentration for things to come and go without destroying the concentration. This applies to thoughts as well. They can come and they can go, but you don't have to get involved with them. You watch them as a process. You don't have to get involved in their content, those little worlds that exist within a thought. This is the kind of concentration that forms a basis for discernment. In other words, you can begin to analyze the concentration itself. You can think, but it doesn't knock the concentration off its foundation. When the Buddha talks about concentrated mind, he says, Mahagatang Jitang, an expanded mind, not a narrowed mind. It's an expanded mind. That's the kind of concentration that allows discernment to arise, that allows the factors of the path to develop. Your mind can expand that way. Your consecration can expand that way. You have to start small. Like anything solid. I'm always amazed that the redwood trees up in Northern California, their seeds are tiny, tiny seeds. But when one of them takes hold, it can become this enormous tree. It's the same with concentration. We all have concentration to one extent or another. Momentary concentration is something everybody has. It's just learning how to recognize it and give it the space so it can grow. To the point where it can take over. It becomes the natural home for the mind. Homes need a solid, large foundation so they don't tip over. That's the kind of foundation you want. And if you give respect to your concentration, that's the kind of foundation you'll get.